Hey everyone, this is James Wilson with MTV Strength Training Systems and BikeJams.com and today I'm going to explain to you exactly how clipless pedals work, what problem they're solving, and why they are better than normal flat pedals, but why they may not be the only or best solution to the problem that they are actually solving. So first of all, why do I need to make this video? The thing is, is clipless pedals are one of the most misunderstood things in the cycling industry. People know that the pros use them, they know that you can get a slight performance advantage from them, but they don't know exactly why, they don't know what is going on. Now they've had these uh, biomechanical model theories thrown out there that they've tested and found aren't true, right? Like the, the need to push and pull on the backstroke, the need to uh, use the ankle, all of these things that they have proposed is why clipless pedals are attaching your foot to your, to your pedal. Uh, produces slightly better results in some situations than not doing that and just riding regular flats. But the thing is, when they've studied these things, they found that they're not true. So what's actually going on? So these, these things get thrown out there because, again, the cycling industry doesn't have another theory to explain what's going on. But when you understand what is going on, then you see what clipless pedals are really doing, what problem they're really solving, and you see, well, maybe they're not the only way to do this. Maybe there's another solution here. So, what are clipless pedals doing? First of all, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Now, <clears throat> when we have a pedal and a foot, okay, these two things have to interface. Now, the pedal is a platform. Even if you're on a clipless pedal, right, it's a platform, something that you're applying pressure into, and it is centered on a rotating axis. So you have a platform that's rotated on a, uh, on a rotating axis here. So again, it doesn't matter if you are talking about a flat pedal, a clipless pedal, whatever it is, it's a, it's a platform that is centered on a rotating axis. And then you have your foot. What is your foot? Well, your foot is an arch. It's a natural arch. You have the ball of the foot and the, uh, the heel, the back of the, the arch there. And you can apply pressure through both ends of the arch. And so you have this arch that you're dealing with. So what you have to do is figure out now how do we interface an arch with a platform that is centered on a rotating axis. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to apply pressure into this platform. The more pressure that I can apply, the more force I can generate, the more power I can generate. So really it's about creating pressure and force into this pedal because that is what is uh, getting the crank arms to turn and creating the pedaling power. And so when you look at, okay, well, how do we do that? Now, there's two ways to do this. You can uh, secure both ends of the arch or you can secure one end of the arch, right? I can apply pressure through both ends or I can apply pressure through one end of the arch. Now, the original theory about pedaling is that it looks like running or walking. And so therefore you wanna push through the ball of your foot because if you look at running or walking, you're, the ball of your foot is what is actually putting pressure into the ground. You're not putting pressure directly into the ground with your heel. Now when your foot strikes the heel or when your foot strikes the ground, the ball of your foot strikes the ground, you have a stretch reflex that actually creates pressure through the heel and helps support it. But the heel itself is not applying pressure into the ground. And so that was why the original uh, pedals the original pedal design was uh, only had to support the ball of the foot because since riding a bike looks like running or walking, then when you run or walk, you're only applying pressure through the ball of the foot. You only need a pedal big enough to secure the ball of the foot or to be able to push through the ball of the foot. And so you ended up with a design, a uh, pedal design that had only one end of the arch on the pedal. And again, they tried to get it centered right? So that you would try to minimize. Now, why do you want to center your foot? Why do you want to center that ball of the foot over the axle? Well, the reason is because you're trying to get the force to go down. Oh, here's my red one. You want the force to go down like this so that you need it centered. If you have one pressure point and you're trying to apply pressure into a platform that's centered on a rotating axis, then you have to try to apply that pressure perfectly centered over that that axis. Otherwise, you're going to get the platform tipping. As soon as that pressure goes off that center line, you're going to get the platform tipping. And so to avoid that, you try to center the ball of the foot over that rotating axis. But the problem is, is it's very hard to get the ball of the foot perfectly centered over the axle. And it's very uncomfortable because you have this long lever arm that you're having to deal with because there's nothing supporting the back of the arch here. 
And so your body has to support it. You have to use your Achilles tendon and your plantar fascia or your plantar fascia, you know, your calves. These muscles uh, on the back end of the foot have to support this end of the arch. This, this arch needs some support. And so uh, it's hard to do that. It gets very uncomfortable. And so people would move the ball of the foot forward a little bit to make it a little more comfortable and also just to secure a little bit more of the arch. Because again, like the arch is one of the strongest forms in nature, but only if you secure both ends. And so having one end hanging in space creates an unstable arch. And so you naturally want to try to, uh, to, to uh, avoid that. And so people would start to move the ball of the foot forward a little bit. And so now you have this, uh, something that happens like this, but this starts to create problems. You have two problems that happen when you start to try to apply force into this rotating platform through the ball of foot, this center pressure point, it starts to, one, you start to get uneven forces going into the platform. This is why when uh, you're on normal pedals, small pedals, your toe points down. You have uneven forces going into the platform that's rotating the platform down. Again, if you have a, uh, a pair of pedal or a pedal here, you can see if I'm perfectly over the center, no problem. But if I take this one pressure point and I move it forward at all and I push into the pedal, I have uneven forces going into the pedal and it's rotating. So I'm actually wasting energy from that rotation. And so that, that now I'm pushing more forward like this than straight down. And so that creates this rotating platform where I'm losing energy and my foot is actually starting to kick off. Again, I'm not pushing down, I'm pushing forward. This rotation of the platform starts to create this forward uh, push. And so my foot is literally trying to push off of the pedal, not push down. The other problem this creates <clears throat> is that the back end of the arch is not supported. Now again, the cycling industry's answer to this was to create a stiff soled shoe and try to attach both ends of the arch through the, the stiffness of the shoe. But the problem is, is that you, you're not able to actually create pressure, right? Like attaching both ends of the arch is not putting uh, something underneath both ends of the arch because both ends of the arch of the foot want to be able to apply pressure. And so not having anything under that still doesn't solve the pressure problem. So you have an unstable arch. That's why your foot flexes some. So you want the stiffest sole shoe you can get to avoid the foot flexing. The reason the foot is flexing is because the arch is unstable and the muscles on the back of the, the foot there are not made to support the, the heel for that long like that. And so they fatigue quickly and it's very hard to keep the heel up and stable. And so when you're pedaling and applying pressure, the arch wants to collapse. And so again, you can secure both ends of the arch together, but you're not actually solving the pressure problem that the arch is really looking for. <clears throat> so when you look at the problems created here, you can see why a clipless pedal would be a good option. Because if I attach my foot to the pedal, then I can have this rotation going on, but it doesn't matter because my foot's not gonna come off, right? Everything that I'm putting into the pedal is gonna go into the crank arm in some way, and I don't have to worry about my foot coming off. If I don't have my foot attached to the pedal, I have to be careful about that. I have to hold back a little bit because if I went as hard as I could, my foot might slip off the pedal. And so that's one of the main reasons that you do see some performance benefits from clipless pedals in some situations. <clears throat> Excuse me, the other thing is with uh, clipless pedal shoes, you're able to get that really stiff sole. You get the carbon sole shoes that attach to the pedals. And so now I've secured both ends of the arch. Again, with flat pedals, it's harder to get that super stiff uh, uh, sole. And so you get more flex of the foot. And so you're losing power from the foot flexing and you're uh, losing power because you have this rotational energy that you're fighting and you're, and you're fighting your foot coming off of the pedal. <clears throat> Excuse me there. So that's, that's one way to solve the problem, right? The problem is we have an unstable arch and we have an unstable platform because of the unstable energy going into the platform. One answer is to just attach the foot to the pedal and, and stiffen up the sole with a uh, stiff soled shoe. That's one answer. That's not the only answer to the problem, okay? So if you're gonna keep this, if you're gonna stick with this model, then that is going to work better. But what's the other way that we can do this? <clears throat> the other answer is to use a platform it, that attaches both ends of the arch. So again, we have an arch 
and then we're able to create a platform that attaches both ends of the arch like this. And so now when I have both ends of the arch on the platform, I'm able to, I have two pressure points now. Okay, this is a much more efficient way to apply pressure into a rotating platform because now I have pressure going down here and going down here. And so now I have stable energy going into the platform. <clears throat> the platform isn't rotating. I don't have to worry about my foot trying to come off of the pedal because the, the platform isn't rotating under my foot and pushing my foot forward. So that takes care of that problem. The other thing you can see is I have both ends of the arch connected by the platform itself. Now both ends of the arch are able to apply pressure. So I have a stable arch. And so now from a functional movement standpoint, this means that I'm able to recruit my hips better. I'm taking stress off of the calf and Achilles tendon and the knees, and I'm putting it on the hips where I want them, right? So now I'm able to apply better power through my legs and my foot. And that power is better applied into the platform because it's going in at both ends and that, and that power is even out. And so I have more stable energy going into the platform. This is another way to solve the problem. You solve the same problem of an unstable arch and unstable energy by lengthening the platform itself, <clears throat> which creates stable energy going into the platform and a stable arch as well. So you stabilize the arch, you stabilize the energy. That's another answer. Instead of ignoring the actual problem, which is a small platform and only having one pressure point that you're trying to apply this, this energy into the platform with creates an unstable arch and unstable energy going into this rotational platform. That's the problem that you're trying to solve with clipless pedals. And again, yes, if that is what you're gonna have, then attaching your foot to that system will produce better results in some situations. But again, that isn't the only answer to the problem. You can stabilize the energy, you can stabilize the arch as well and address the actual problem itself instead of just slapping a Band-Aid on it. So by having a platform that does this, you take care of those problems as well. So again, that was the idea behind the design of the Catalyst pedal where again, I'm able to get those two pressure points. Both ends of my arch are able to get onto the pedal. So now I have two pressure points and I have a stable arch. So again, you find out that clipless pedals were never better. We just had crappy pedal design that was designed from the wrong uh, thought process of looking at running and walking and trying to figure out how do we create a pedal and a system that mimics running and walking because that's what riding a bike looks like rather than actually sitting back and looking at, okay, what is the actual problem we're trying to solve? We have an arch and we have a rotating platform. We are trying to apply pressure into this rotating platform through this arch. Go, right? That is the correct problem that we're trying to solve. Now this explains all of the science out there. It explains why, again, why you see uh, clipless pedals performing better in some situations, but not by leaps and bounds. Because again, this attaching your foot to an unstable arch, unstable energy solution isn't the best way to go, right? And so having a flat pedal, even one that's not as large enough to attach both ends of the arch and moving your foot to a little bit more of a midfoot position is gonna help mitigate some of these things. You're gonna stabilize some of that energy. You're gonna stabilize the arch a little bit. And it's just, it allows your body to move more naturally. Again, because your foot is not coming off of the pedal, it's not like running or walking. You wanna maintain stable pressure into the platform, AKA the pedal, throughout the whole pedal stroke, as opposed to only having one uh, you know, switching from, from two to one, right? If I'm going to jump, I start with two and then I transfer to one, but I'm not coming off of my pedal. You can see what actually happens when I would do that. I don't want that to happen with my pedal. So I don't wanna be mimicking running or walking or jumping or any of these things. I wanna have that stable pressure with a stable arch going into the platform through the pedal stroke. So uh, that's the better way to solve this problem. And when you do that, you see you don't have to attach your foot to the pedals. You don't need stiff sole shoes. You don't need all the nonsense that comes with it. You can have high performance with also having better comfort because again, without having this, when your toes are pointed down like this, you're jamming your toes into the toe box. Every time you stand up and with every pedal stroke, 
it, it's very uncomfortable. You're putting a lot of stress on the calf and Achilles tendon and plantar fascia and the knees and the low back because of the unstable arch and just all the problems that that creates there. So it's, it's much more comfortable to ride with a stable arch and stable energy going into that platform. And it's also fun and safer, right? Like clipless pedals do improve or increase the chance of wrecking and, get, and getting injured. Like I've come across studies where they've actually looked at this. Again, there is science about this stuff out there, guys. This isn't all just opinion. And there is science that ha does show that when they look at and study these things and look at and do the, a, a statistical analysis of it, that clipless pedals statistically increase your chance of getting a hip injury when you wreck because not being able to get unclipped means that you don't you can't get a leg out, you fall over and you hit your hip and, and getting a hip injury is a, a, a much is a higher you have a higher likelihood of doing that with clipless pedals. So again, this whole idea of clipless pedals increasing your risk of injury is not just opinion. It is it is backed by stu studies and science. So when you look at the actual studies and science that's out there, you see that clipless pedals and the story behind them don't hold water. And so the theory that does make sense is this one here, where we're trying to how to figure out how do we create pressure into this rotating platform with an arch and keeping it stable as well. And when you look at that, you look at the science, you look at the movement principles, you look at the EMG readings, you take all that together, you see that there is a much better way to come about this problem than just you know slapping, you know, trying to attach your foot to the platform and ignoring the actual problem. And so again, this is why you see this trend, even with clipless pedals, where the cleat's moving further and further back and the pedal's actually extending out so that they can actually start to get more pressure from the foot it's into the pedal itself as opposed to relying on the carbon sole shoe as much and that pedal uh, cleat it's moving more towards that midfoot position because again people despite what they're told what the theories are supposed to tell them they instinctively know that that's not a good foot position to be stuck on the ball of your foot is and with a tiny platform underneath you is not a good position to be in and that moving the foot uh, further to the midfoot position and getting a little bit more platform under your foot is the better way to go. And again, that's why you see this trend even in clipless pedals. So again, you can just skip ahead to the line, you know, to the end of the trend, which is a better platform like the Catalyst pedal that allows you to attach both ends of your arch and solves the actual problem behind it. But again, you, once you understand what clipless pedals really do, then you understand why they outperform small pedals but they're not the only answer to the problem and a longer pedal can actually help solve the problem in a better, more efficient way. So there is another option for uh, you know, efficient, high performance riding and it involves actually solving the problems instead of ignoring them and just attaching your foot to the pedal. So again, you can learn more at uh, bikejames.com and at pedalinginnovations.com. You can also Google the Flat Pedal Revolution Manifesto. Remember, there is science about this, guys. I have it linked to, I have the studies in the Flat Pedal Revolution Manifesto. And even if you accuse me of cherry picking, it's probably more science than you've ever seen on this subject. So you can at least start there. And then keep doing your own research and see if you find some other stuff out there that, that leads you to a different conclusion. But again, I, based on what I've found and my experience with this, this is what's going on and this all makes sense. This theory holds up. When you, when you put this theory under the light of the science that we have, you see that it holds up. When you put the biomechanical need to pull it, push and pull or, or use the uh, you know, the ankle or all these other things they put out there and you look at them under the light of the current science, you see they don't hold up. And so the point of science is to take a theory, test it and see, does it hold up? And if it doesn't hold up, then you need a better theory. And so this is a better theory. We need to stop talking about clipless pedals like they're magical and they're, cause they're not magical, right? There is a reason that they work. When you understand why they work, it's almost kind of like, well, geez, why didn't we think of this before? Like, why is this how they're trying to solve this problem? This actually makes no sense to try to solve this problem this way. This is, uh, no, you know, there, there is a better way to do this. So um, again, check out, uh, check out <clears throat> more info at pedalinginnovations.com and bikejames.com and the Flat Pedal Revolution Manifesto. And yeah, hopefully this has given you some fuel for thought and I will talk to you next time.